hey, anybody can build a local carousel in Elementor. It's pretty straightforward. But ever wanted to give your clients the ability to update and upload logos to the carousel, change the order without having to go inside Elementor? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how it gets done. For this video, you are going to need a few plugins. Obviously, you need Elementor, but if you just have the free version of Elementor, it's just not going to work. So you're going to need to upgrade to Elementor Pro. After that, you're going to need Jet Engine from Coco Block, which allows you to do all sorts of cool dynamic content stuff. So if you're serious about building Elementor websites, this is a plugin that you cannot live without. And last, you need Post Type Order. That's going to allow us to change and move our logos around for our clients, which is super useful and beneficial for for a customer. So let's let's get into it. First things first, we're going to make sure that we have all the plugins necessary to be able to make this work. So we're going to go into the plugins section, install plugins, and we're going to check that we have Elementor, Elementor Pro, Jet Engine, and Post Types Order. Those are the plugins that we're going to need in order to make this happen. We're then going to go into Croco Block, and we're going to make sure that Jet Engine is actually installed, so we're going to go into where it says install and we're going to check that this is actually active and ready to go. It looks like we are active, so we can move on to actually creating the post types. So in Jet Engine, in order to create post types, you're going to go into the Jet Engine section and choose post types. This is what's going to allow us to create a, a new post type here for partners, right? kind of like how we did for teams in the previous um, a previous uh, tutorial. So we're going to go into add new. In the post type name section, we're going to type in partners. And so automatically create this look for us. If you don't like the slug, you can always change it. And for the most part, you don't really need to do anything else. But just for the sake of uh, completion, we're going to exclude the logos from search because we don't want somebody to type into, into search for the partners and then the partners show up. It's like a small thing that we add on the website so it doesn't necessarily need to be there. And then on the edit screen, we are not going to need the editor. So we're going to remove that. And then just to make it a little bit prettier, we're going to replace this icon here with a different icon. So under menu icon, we're just going to select something that represents partners. I think these three circles kind of does the trick and we're going to add post type so now you'll see that we created some partners and this is kind of how we are going to be able to add or edit logos to our partner section so when we click on that you'll now notice that we have a title and we have the date on this section so we are missing some elements we're missing a logo and we're missing the link to the partner so let's head back to the post types under Partners, we're going to hit Edit. And then we're going to add a new meta field. This meta field is going to be the logo, so we're going to type logo. This will automatically, again, populate the name and ID. It's going to be a field type, and it's going to be a media type. So on the field type, we're going to choose media for images. Here in the description, we're going to want to give the user on the back end some kind of uh, I like to give some kind of message or something so they have an idea of what to upload. So for here, we're going to say upload a logo at 500 pixels by 250 pixels. And then it's not required, no conditional logic is necessary. And then we're going to add a new meta field. And then this is going to be the partner website. We're going to choose the field type again because we're not adding a tab or according to an endpoint. And then for the fill tab, we're just going to leave it as text. We're going to hit, hit update post type. And then now when we go to, to here, we'll notice that it still says title and date. All right, so it would be nice to have a logo to show up here. That way, when we upload it, visually, we can kind of see what partner it is. So we're going to head back to the post types. We're going to click on edit. And then here, the cool thing about Jet Engine is it kind of allows you to do that. So under Admin Columns, we're going to choose Add New. And we're going to just call it a logo. This is basically um, what shows up on the top of the title. So let me just open it up in a new tab. So let's go to Partners. So this is what shows up here on the top part 
of the of the table. We're gonna cut on the logo, and then this is gonna require custom callbacks. If you wanna pull something like an image, you have to use a custom callback from Jet Engine, and then we're gonna select an existing callback. So we're gonna choose render image. This allows us to render an image, like a like a post thumbnail or a logo, and then we're gonna put in the name of the of the actual field, meta field. In this case, we call it logo. I'm gonna hit apply, I'm gonna show you where you get that information from. So logo comes from right here. So under the name and ID, that would be whatever you enter here. So if you put partner logo, it'll more, li it'll more likely be partner dash logo. You put that information on here. All right, let's hit update post type. And now when we head to partners, You'll notice that now we have a logo. Now the logo ends up being behind date, so we want to change that. So we're going to head one more time into the post types. We're going to go into edit, admin columns, logo, and then we're going to set it as the second option in that table. So now we go to partners. Now the logo shows up there. All right, great. So now we got to populate the partners with the logos. We're going to add our initial logos and then the client can always add more later. That's the whole point of this tutorial. So we're going to click on add new and then I'm going to add one BB and T. So that's going to be one of them. I'm going to choose the media. I already kind of uploaded these so I don't have to show you uploading. I'm going to choose the logo and then the website. So I'm just going to call it bbt.com. All right, we're going to hit publish. And now when we head back to partners, now you have the partner here, you have the logo, everything's looking good, and then you have the date. I'm going to add one more. Let's see what we have on here. Morgan and Company. Morgan and Co. And then put a link to the partner website, morganandco.com. Hit publish. All right, so now I'm just going to files forward through this section as I add additional logos to this to the website. Okay, so we added all of the partners, all the logos, uh, and we're ready to move to the next step. The cool thing about this process too is that if in the future you wanted to actually have like full blown pages for the partners, you could, because you know this creates a whole permanent link that we can use and we can you know add additional items to this. So this is a really cool way to kind of do things. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create like the thing that shows up on the front end. So we need to be able to tell our our website that we want to pull the logos from here. So the way that we do that is let's just first go into Elementor and edit this page. Let's create an area for the logos to to live. So we're going to go scroll to the bottom before the join our mailing list and this image here. And we're going to create a section. And then since we're using Jet Engine, we're going to use a listing grid. So we're going to click on the nine uh, square icon and add our listing grid. So this listing grid is going to pull all the logos that we have on the back end. And we'll get to that in a second. Let's just first add a, a heading above our listing grid. We're going to center that and just call it our gracious partners. And we're going to just choose a different kind of headline. Okay. So here we go. So now we have our headline, our heading. We have our listing grid ready to go. Um, now we have to create the visual. So the way that the listing grid works is that it requires kind of like a template of what each individual logo looks like. And then we're going to turn this, uh, this grid into an actual slider. So we're going to go back into the back end. We're going to go into Jet Engine and we're going to create a listing. This is kind of where you create templates within uh, Jet Engine. You're going to create Add New. Yeah, it's going to be a post. And the post type that we're going to choose is going to be Partners. And then we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it a partner grid. And then the listing view is going to be Elementor. You also have the choice of choosing Gutenberg, but we're going to stick to Elementor for now. Let's create a listing item. 
All right, once that's done, we're gonna click on the plus sign and we're gonna choose just the whole section. And then now obviously we don't wanna work with an image so large. So this, if we put in an image here that represents our logo, let's just do that again. As you can see, it's huge. So we wanna work with something more manageable, kind of what it's gonna actually look like on the front end. So we're gonna go into the settings section down here. We're gonna choose listing settings and we're gonna put a more manageable size, so about 300 pixels. We're gonna hit update. And now we're just gonna pull the logo. So we're gonna click on our image. We're gonna choose dynamic tag. We're gonna go to Jet Engine and choose custom image. We're gonna click again and from the field select logo. All right, so that's pulling our logo. All right. And then now if this is up to you, but if you want it to give the ability for people to click and go out of your website to open up the partner website, you could do that. But first, this is image size, select custom or full. So it pulls up the full logo. We're going to center it. So you have equal space on both sides. And then we're going to do a custom URL. We're going to choose dynamic tag. From dynamic tag, we're going to choose custom field. And from the custom field, we're going to pick partner website. Hit update. So now when somebody clicks on this, it'll take them to the partner website. One last item we're going to do, which is click on link options, and we're going to open this in a new window. We want to make sure that people don't leave our website when they are clicking on those logos. All right, that's it. That's all you really need to do in the listing grid. So I'm sorry, not in the listing grid, in the listings within Jet Engine. So we're going to exit this. And then now we're going to head back into where we were editing the home page. And then now we're going to select the listing item from here. If you recall, it was called Partner Grid. So we're just going to call it Partner. And it should pull up in the drop down menu. So now we have all the logos pulling exactly the way we want it. That's awesome. But as you can see, it's not, it's not really a carousel right now. You don't have the logos um, as you're able to click through to the next carousel item. So. We're going to do that next. So the first thing you're going to want to do, or the list that I want to do, is I want to make those logos a little bit smaller. So we're going to put four uh, in the desktop mode. And then we're going to make sure that we increase this number to something bigger. So I don't even foresee myself every, having more than 20 partners. So I'm going to restrict that to 20. You can put 100. The number is irrelevant here. It's just as long as it's a number big enough that in the future, as you add partners, uh, there's enough room for them here. We don't necessarily need to touch anything else here. Uh, we're going to make it just equal heights just to make sure they're all the same. And I'm going to give you a tip in order to see how we have really beautiful spacing here between each logo. I'm going to give you a, a tip at the end of the, of the tutorial. So stay tuned for that. All right, so make sure they're all equal heights. And then at the end, we're going to scroll all the way bottom here. Like we don't have, we don't want to use a custom query. You can if you want to. Uh, it's not really necessary for this particular tutorial. Um, if there's anything you want to exclude, you can do all of that through um, this interface here. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we don't really need to do that. Okay, so in the slider section, we're going to enable slider. And as you can see, this is gonna turn it automatically into kind of what we want, a logo slider. And if you click through, you'll notice that you'll be able to start going through all the logos. Uh, slides to scroll essentially says how many logos are scrolled at a time. For our purposes, we're going to choose three, so that way we move enough of them at the same time, but also keep the last one that we have on the list. We're also going to get rid of the arrows because I don't really like arrow navigation. And we are going to keep the show dots as navigation. And I'm okay with the speed right now. I'm okay that it's an infinite loop. And I don't think we need to use center mode. It kind of always gives you a weird result, so I'm going to just not put that. Hit update. All right, and then I'm going to pull the website on the front end just to see where we're looking at. And I think, I think we have our slider. Here it is. Pretty simple. So one last thing I wanted to show you was what happens on mobile. So if you go back to Elementor and you go to responsive mode and you click on logos, this is not a good look for, for us. So we want to make sure that we go back into the listing grid. So we can choose listing grid here from the navigator. And for mobile, we're going to choose two. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna hit update. Go back to slider. Just disable it and enable it. There we go. And now we have our slider with two logos on mobile and with four logos on desktop. So now you have your slider all ready to go. What's next? Well, the last thing we're going to do is just kind of show you how you can edit the order of the logos once they're added. Because obviously, if you if you want to make sure that you you know you highlight a specific partner before the other one, or you have a new partner, this you know better partner or whatever, you're going to be able to you want to be able to kind of edit that information. So we're going to head back into the back end, hit partners, click on partners again, and then with this plugin that we install, we're now able to drag and drop the order of the partners very simply like that the other way that you can kind of access that is you can click on reorder and then you again you can order the name order the names of the partners via this interface as well one thing to note is that when you install this software for reordering um, post types uh, you're going to want to go to settings click on post types order and then modify any settings that you want and make sure you hit safe settings otherwise it may not work so now we're going to refresh and now we just see bbt first citizens after morgans and then mckinney okay so i briefly mentioned a tip on how to keep the logos nicely spaced out so it's actually very simple uh, we're going to go into a library this just takes a little bit of planning beforehand um, let's go to the library we got our logos so essentially all our logos are the same size so they're 500 by 250 and this allows us to kind of plan them out the way we want so we have you know they're all the same size so proportionately when you upload them they will all look good if you upload images or the logos at different sizes you could have you know one big logo one small logo um, and it's never going to look consistent. So I found through many years that if you just make them all the same size, but then you use that as kind of like your container, you're actually able to keep them all fairly consistent. So it may work for some projects, for most of them so far that I've ever worked on, um, that seems to do the trick. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow, like the video, comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to help. Stay tuned for the next one or something like that.